the last, right? I mean, I I always wanted to be a lawyer when I was. Uh, I've said this several times that when I was uh, at an impressionable age, I read a really bad book by Sidney Sheldon called Rage of Angels. It was, I mean, you know, I can't even quote a really uh, philosophical or a great book like even Ayn Rand, who right now I don't consider a great author for her politics, but at least it sound it would sound heavy, right? No, Sidney Sheldon changed my life, and there there was this protagonist called Jennifer Parker. and i just wanted to be a lawyer i just ever since class 8 of my school i wanted to be a lawyer there's nothing i wanted to do and that's the only thing i did not become so i studied law i have a law graduate i'm a law graduate i have the certificate but i did not pursue it i got it to fashion and then films just so i think for me it's what keeps me entertained so when i keep saying i came to entertain the last my one point agenda in life is to be entertained is to have a good time and at that point whatever can offer that as the final destination i plan i know i get on to that journey so i got into fashion i had a great time then nagesh uh, kokunur came down from the us to make hyderabad blues and he was enlisting uh, help from whichever quarter he could get because he was you know uh, the writer director producer lead actor everything rolled into one in that thing and then he approached me to help him in production and then when he came to meet me uh he you know said will you audition for a role and like i said in hyderabad um hamare paas kuch hai rahe na rahe confidence ki kami nahi hai so i said acha chalo i'll audition for that role so i auditioned and i got the role and from day one of rehearsals that we had at nagesh's house i knew there's nothing else i wanted to do i wanted to be in movies one way or the other and you know like people go around i mean they they go around the world they they travel such vast distances even in their lives and to have my calling fall into my lap i cannot thank whoever is up there right there left there i don't know wherever whoever it is who did this whole divine process for me is wonderful and the only credit i can take is that i said yes to the most you know bizarre thing that was being asked of me at that point but what keeps me excited about this because i've been in this field now for 20 years you know following my checkered uh, career or my checkered uh, resume uh, so to speak is that every day is different it's not like you're making another film it's not like you're going on the next day of shoot every day genuinely is a new day you don't know what problems you'll encounter that day you don't know what people you'll encounter that day you might meet the same people but a different version of them every day so you're like monday who you're meeting the same is not the same person you're meeting on tuesday so you know to get your resources to get your bandwidth to get all your wherewithal to deal with that on a daily basis is so exciting is so much fun that you know the hard work associated with uh, movies is often forgotten because you only remember either the glamour part of it that you see on screen or the fun you had making it and that's the only way you remain in films is if you've enjoyed every single moment of your day it is an opportunity you don't realize all this other than in hindsight see i can come here and espouse all this because i'm talking about hindsight i'm not talking about the present moment right future you have an idea hindsight of course you know present moment you have no idea so i think the 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 best way to be is to be so open to experiences because it's no big deal if you say yes to a film and you don't enjoy that it will end it's not never ending right or you can just resign and say boss this is not for me do it uh, you know in a nice way and you know backtrack so don't say no because you see yourself only as a director or you see yourself only as a lead actor it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter if a bit role comes to you in a film or the opportunity to uh, you know work on a, a film set of a director you've admired may may not be in the same position may not be in the direction department it could be in the art department it could be in production department but to be in that atmosphere to be surrounded by that kind of energy you learn far more than becoming a director on your own set or becoming or getting that position on a, on a set that you probably don't know much about or don't care much for so i think ready present waiting and saying yes is the biggest step uh, it is the smartest way to be in this uh, industry obviously you wear three different hats depending on how you are approaching the script right so if you are approaching the script like a producer you are looking at it in a different way and otherwise so uh, 
I am not a trained uh, professional in this industry. I learned on the job. But what I learned throughout and has good, stood me in good stead. Now, I don't know whether this is an advice you give students. So I, I'm just going to speak from my experience. Please take Absolutely. what you will and jump the rest. Is that I rely a lot on my gut. And strangely, I like to produce what I would like to watch. So, you know, if I'm... Uh, so th that way you, you don't buck to the trend saying romances are going on. Because by the time you finish the movie, the romance phase might be over and action might have come in. So it doesn't matter, you know, to, to be relevant does not mean to be constantly going on with what's the trend. But being true to yourself. Because I'm telling you that times, movies of mine have flopped resoundingly. But those are the films I truly didn't believe in. And you can see on screen whether you're having a good time or not whether you believe in what you're doing or not. It's, and this is not just uh, some, you know, when people talk about energy and karma, it's not about that. It's a reality. It's based. It's facts that you can see on screen the work ethic, the pleasure, the, the belief that's gone in. Hyderabad Blues became a hit only because everybody believed in it. Right? I mean, we had no clue what we were doing, but we... So anyway, we'll come to that particular film a little later because we can go on about for an hour only on... Uh, Hyderabad Blues. But uh, so as a producer, I read, if I can visualize what I'm reading, I know it's a winner. If it transports me to like, if I'm reading Iqbal, and it transports me to the village of Kolipad, or if I'm reading Dora, and I can see myself on the sand dunes, I know it's a winner. I can, I see it that way, right? So as a producer, the, 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 if the script speaks out to me, and it, it you know, it, takes me into their world, I know it's something that's going to turn out good on screen as well. It's just not going to remain good on page. Uh, as a costume designer, it's obviously the characters. So even when you get a character, like, like just say Iqbal, because I think it's a popular film and a lot of people must have watched it, is you take Iqbal and then you see this is a village boy uh, who does not speak. Uh, and also coming from the social strata that they're coming from, right? They're hand to mouth as farmers. They're not really uh, affluent in their surroundings and stuff like that. So you do research like that. Like, would she wear? Would uh, Iqbal's mother have a matching kurta, matching shalwar, matching dupatta? Very unlikely. Because they'll probably have three sets of clothes with their juggling, right? So you just make... Uh, and it's not because we were low budget, but a lot of thought went into that costume. It's not like, you know, theme costumes with picture orado. It wasn't that at all. You know, you gave Iqbal's father that kind of kurta, a long kurta, he would wear that. But when he would go on to the field, he would tie his thing and probably take off his kurta and be in the banyan. But now again, you have to take care if you're doing it for a film and not just, uh, you know, our sketches, is that if you just give Iqbal's father, Anwar, just the banyan and the pajama on the farm, then where is he, hell is he going to put his mic for sing sound? So you have to think of all that and say, okay, so I'll give him a shamla around his thing so he, that will conceal the mic. So everything has to, you know, eventually come to go on that screen, not to tell the world what a great designer you are, you know, and then it doesn't serve the play. It doesn't serve the purpose of the film. So that doesn't matter. Everything is for the film. So that's where costume comes into it. Another example from Iqbal I was talking about the other day is, was when we did the scene where they go to pray Every day to the mosque, right? They're going. But one day is Eid. And how do you show that one day is Eid? However you give a crisp new kurta, it's no, it's no fun. So we did the same kurta for father and son. Because that's how they would work. They would buy a thaan of fabric from, let's say, the, uh, you know, your ration shop. And then because at times, uh, you know, I, I, I grew up in a middle class family. But I think we all grew up in socialist India where everything was so important and so valuable. We had to wait for years for a telephone connection and stuff. So I remember... I was not embarrassed then, but looking back to it, because I saw some pictures the other day, I was wearing a kurta, the same shirt my brother was wearing in the same fabric. The same fabric had the toaster cover. My mother was just so mean. I mean, why would she do toaster covers in the same cover? This thing, yeah. Magar wo kapda baj gaya hoinga, bitte kapda ka kuch nahi kar sakte. Toaster ka cover bana do. So, you know, those kind of things go into the research of the costume. You're going by the whole milieu. Then when it comes to an actor, you know, I'm sorry, we've said this enough, that actors occupy the shortest time on a film and walk away with the largest accolades. 
हाफ द टाइम यू थिंक अरे वो अक्षय कुमार की पिक्चर देखे बुट्टा उन्हें आया चार दिन के वास्ते फिल्म शूट पे राइट बट यू रिमेम्बर इट इज अक्षय कुमार फिल्म वी ब्लड यू वर्क ऑन वन ईयर फॉर द फिल्म फ्रॉम द स्क्रिप्ट स्टेज टू द डबिंग टू द रिलीज सो एक्टर्स अप्रोच ए स्क्रिप्ट इन एन एक्सट्रीमली selfish is a wrong word in a very uh, myopic version they look at that their role they don't look at so they they look at the story they like the story they like the world they like the whole milieu that's going on but eventually they're saying mai kya kar raha hu uske andar what am i doing so there are times when i've had actors come to me and said you know i i love the role i've never played this role before but i don't have a moment and i'm thinking the moment does not come from the script the moment is created when you are on that scene and suddenly you take that scene away from the lead actor that is the moment that is what you are bringing to the table as an actor right so actors approach it only from that role that is why many a times you'll see the director not taking suggestions from an actor on a scene is because they have not done the math from top to bottom it is very dangerous to take suggestions from an actor on a scene while you are filming because they'll suddenly say yaar shall i do this and at that time the director says ha huh, sounds like a good idea but no it is that scene you don't know where it plays out eight scenes later and then you might be stuck so i think the smartest way is to stick to the script the script should be your bible you should not deviate from the script all discussion should be in pre production all discussion should be in readings so the director or the script writer or the producer have chance to make that change and see how the effect is down the line actor suggestions are the worst on a set because they only involve them very rarely have i come out across an actor suggestion that elevates a scene it might elevate the performance it might elevate what they have to bring to the table but very rarely it elevates a scene or the film on end so these are the three ways one should approach a script wonderful i think we can do a whole webinar series on the three things that you told you can do uh, a webinar say i'm telling you every department on film is so important it's so uh, you know the scope is so varied and wide and deep that we just can't just say production because everything adds up to that thing on screen malum and you absolutely. have to know what goes into it to either respect it or to know that you can't do it both are a good thing to have extremely important you know uh, the, unfortunately in india kya hota that uh, most of the actors whether they are stars or not they have their personal stylists because like i said it's all about them they need to look good and see which is absolutely 100% i mean why would i go to a theater on a 100 foot screen and see ugliness or see ugliness that is not meant for my story right why would i i'm being drawn into a world then you can't take me away by just putting something which is completely contrary to the world you are making so like if you uh, so you know it it doesn't make sense okay okay for example there was this film uh, uh, thankfully i can't remember the name but it had amir khan and kajol in it and kajol was playing a kashmiri now why why was she cast as a kashmiri actually nice dusky skin and you put her as a kashmiri makes no sense but chalo bhai amir khan kajol pair works it works for the uh, you know finances for the film it works out in the money department you cast them not one the entire film i was distracted because kajol is not wearing a firan she is not wearing anything local to the costume she is wearing chiffon dupatta in kashmir you give me a song in kashmir where you are putting women in okay that's a song that you know you don't sing around in real life around trees and uh, mountains so I'll, i'll i'll take that flight of imagination but if you are giving me a character and you are telling me the geographical land that she occupies then you do this it makes no sense so you know you're constantly distracted saying nahi yaar kashmiri so then you it doesn't matter if she's she's in kashmir or bombay it doesn't matter it doesn't matter then then you just see kajol and amir khan right then, but then you take a film like um, in the recent times uh, take piku right it had deepika padukone she would have brought in herself a stylist whatever no problem she wore clothes that you picked out of shopper stock because that's how a delhi girl a you know uh, born in calcutta whatever living in chitranjan park you knew that was chitranjan park the way amitabh bachchan dressed with that sleeveless sweater and that monkey cap and went on the cycle that is if anybody has been to delhi chitranjan park which is the entire uh, locality where bengalis mostly reside it was that it didn't matter you're forgetting that she's deepika padukone you're looking at piku 
you haven't gone to the movie to pick up fashion styles uh, tips those days are over where you wore a rekha neck and called it the umrajan blouse or you wore those exactly the same clips and called it bobby clips if one part of the fashion leaps out at you and it becomes a trend then that's great but if it doesn't you've served the play so it's very very important and you see how authentic piku was in the language that they spoke in the clothes that they wore in the milieu that they occupied it was fabulous and you saw the entire difference when they drove to calcutta because the aunt was wearing those bengali sarees you know with the big bindi uh, you know the, and it was not the shabana it was not the sharmila tagore of amar prem who threw the keys stylistically over her shoulder right her aunt in calcutta had those crushed cotton sarees which so the whole thing you wear your cotton nighties it is a whole le- different level of pressure when you serve the character in their milieu trust me on this i think the answer to that question would be that those films spoke to you they spoke like you they spoke hyderabad blue spoke in three languages you know even in this webinar when i know it's an english speaking audience that i have i've slipped into urdu you know you'll use words and you'll end a sentence with saying this happens kada i mean that's how you speak you do not in india with the host of you know multiple languages and uh, accents and uh, uh, dialects that we have it's very difficult to stay true to one language it almost sounds false right a lot of our hindi movies also sound false who speaks in constructed sentences who says ma tum kahan ja rahi ho ma tum kahan ja rahi right that's how we speak and hyderabad blues was the first film that spoke like us it spoke it had no what was the story the story was an an indian boy comes back home after 9 years in america really would you put money to produce a film like that where is the catch where is the twist where is the great epiphanic ending none of that but it related to everybody everybody had a mother like that an aunt like that a grandmother like that a neighbor like that and that i think was the and it's the first time the middle class of india came out and flexed their uh, box office muscle they all came out and watched the movies in the theater because it had no songs it had actors you couldn't recognize from anywhere and there was not even a guest appearance of you, you know anyone you knew from any field it's not even just acting you didn't even have a, a prime minister or a chief minister i mean from no field did you have any recognizable face on that uh, movie right on the screen but yet it was you it was your father it was your mother the mother who constantly asks have you eaten i have had that all my life mama i got a really bad stomach ache acha beta khana khaye acha khane ko kya karna hai mere stomach ache se you know ma i'll be late today from work bol to khana khaye ayyo rama you know so this so these kind of relatable things that were put in were not put in by accident they were put in by design the loud aarti that comes in everyone has that problem right the the the, the celebration of the the you know the, to share your celebration with the entire community uh, city at large you just put on a loud speaker because you know bhai mere meri id hai aap bhi utho subah jaldi so that kind of thing where was this where was a film made in boarding school with young kids in ni- ninth grade talking about you know uh, the cheese that gets molded or jerking off looking at a playboy magazine those are real stuff we never spoke about that in film because for us a film language was different from your language spoken at home which is not true you know to have identifiability how many of us identify with devdas you watch it for dilip kumar or shahrukh khan's performance do you know anyone who comes drunk at this chandramukhi no it doesn't i mean that's for entertainment you forget that serves a different purpose you know uh, uh, but films like like keep going back to my favorite piku or you go back to hyderabad blues or rockford those are us those are people we know and then to see them on screen ek alag maza hai you know that our stories also can be made into films that people will remember so i think the relatability was the fact that its longevity is there you know you don't know for sure you can go wrong right but the fact is that like i said if you go by your gut and if you find it funny you can have a team of people who can read it for you but you know although i understand the the need for discussion although i understand that when you are starting out at least uh 
to be able to get in some kind of feedback, to be able to act upon the feedback. But you need to know what you want to make. So you need to know what feedback you want to take, right? Because I might be the successful producer. I might say no to your script. That doesn't mean the script is good, not good or not bad. If you are convinced, you be true to your script and your screenplay. You be true to your idea. It might get made well. It might get made badly. It might be successful. It might be a piece of shit. But hey, it's my piece of shit. I don't have anyone to blame and say, I should not have taken Elahe's feedback on this. See, that worked for that. You don't know. You're just putting it out there. You are being judged by people who don't know you, your family, your struggles. All those are irrelevant. When you watch a Titanic, you don't say, uh, Yaar, what a great film, but you know, he went over budget. I don't care. I loved the movie and I came out. Neither do you say, what a shit film, but boy, he brought it in budget. Not important. In the end, you, the final product will speak to some, will not speak to some. If it speaks to someone, you're really happy. I mean, you're really glad that, you know, God, I got what I went in for. But it's a risk, you know, it's art. Yeah. What do you do? So the, the best way to be is at least convince one person and that could be yourself. So, you know, you know, you're not wrong with that. True. And, and from a student standpoint, I would perhaps, you know, translate it as have the clarity and conviction of your own thoughts. Absolutely. Belief and is so, clarity is so important because if I am telling you no as a producer, how will you convince me why you see merit in that script? Right? I don't like it. I don't like horror. I just don't get horror. But if I'm a producer, I have to put my name to a horror film because at the end of the day, I also have to make money, right? So I'm like, Acha bhai, if you tell me it's good, go ahead and make it. I will not watch it. I will not come for a day on set where I have screaming cats and blood. But the point is, so if I need to trust someone's vision, do you have that vision? Everything can't be my vision. Then I'll be making one film all the time. If you see my filmography... It has an Hyderabad blue, it has a rock for it, it has an 8 by 10 tasveer, it has an ashaya that's about cancer. But the one thing common in all my films, no, there are no villains. Everything is a happy ending. Because if there's one thing I can control in life and then I make it happy ending, why would I not do that? I hate it when they're sad. I would not. I really have to thank Nagesh for this because like I said, I was brought off the streets into this world and he being an engineer, everything is about planning, right? Everything is about planning to the last detail. So he set up this production in um, system in place, which has worked great for us for the last 22 years. And like I keep saying, if you have a better idea, tell me, if not go with mine. Um, so every production works differently. So even when I get ADs or other, uh, uh, you know, d department uh, heads or people who work it into my production for that film, we try, it's very disconcerting if eight people are working on different forms of production. You need to work on one form of production. You need to have hierarchy. Hierarchy is not to tell you who, you know, who you are below, but to see who you can go to with the question. Because if you go to the right person, you get the right answer. You go to the wrong person, you get the wrong answer. So that is why hierarchies are set up to say, this one will head it, this one will be under, this one will be under that person. So the way we did it was, we had a... So there are different departments, there's cinematography, there's art, there's costume, and all come together to the director who then works to bring it all together to, you know, work in a scene. So we appointed each director that Nagesh called an AD in charge of a department. So there was one person in charge of art, there was one person in charge of costume, there was one person in charge of camera. So they brought that department problems to production meetings, and they conveyed the requirements of the production to that department. So neither Nagesh, nor me, nor the costume designer, nor anyone had to run around to departments. They had to contact one person. So if the HOD of the, let's say the costume designer of the film had a problem with art, she would tell her AD that, listen, I can't do this. Who in spoke, turn spoke to that AD? They didn't have department clash heads post-planning this. I mean, when you go on a recce, all the departments come together. And the two departments that fight the most other than... Uh, camera and sound because they fight on production in the pre-production is art and costume because constantly they want the other person to change and constantly production is saying boss I can't change the color of the wall why can't you just change the color of the dupatta and that costume person is like no it's a whole palette I'm like you know really forget the palette I really can't spend on changing the color of the wall but anyway so they fight the most but so this is what we did so 
even Nagesh, when he had to look at something in art, he had to just contact his AD who was right there in office at that point, instead of waiting for the HOD to come into office and then remember the list of questions, right? So that was it. And another thing we put into place, I don't know whether we put into place it has already existed, is that every day was a production meeting, even while we were filming. Even while we are filming. So you finish the day shoot and the team gets in together for a prod meet for the next day shoot. Right, so you have the entire production board, you have all that, you know what you're going to shoot the next day. But every day, because like I said, every day is different. Every day is different on set. So tomorrow, uh, and the most important thing we, uh, we decide in the production board is the order of scenes. What we will go with first. So that way you know exactly what you have to ready, be ready with first and what you can't be ready with first. So let's say Nagesh says, okay, so this is how it is. We are going with scene 33 because it's an outdoor scene. And my cameraman has said that the, you know, Shudeep has said that the sun will be at the right place to shoot this. So we're going with 33. Everyone airs their problems then. Costume can say, sir, 33 is really difficult because the costume is the one we've hired. It has to come from there. Art can say, no, sir, the camel is not going to come. You know, things like that. So it's aired out over there. Then we check with cameraman saying, can we just shift, shift 33 first? If he's hard on his what, which normally they are, because it's sun for them suddenly will not rise the next day. So then you just, you know, kill yourselves and get it together for that first ray of sun that comes onto your... Uh, on hits earth and you're ready for that shot so that's how that's what we set up and it's worked well for us so far I have I mean that's the only way Nagesh works and when he writes a script he doesn't write the script the Indian way which is a story his script is given to us with screenplay dialogue with the correct margin of that 1.1 on either side so uh, when we get a script in hand from Nagesh one page translates to one minute of screen time so immediately you know that it's a 90-page script, so it's roughly 90 minutes, not counting montages. Tell maximum, you'll stretch it by another 10 minutes, 100-minute film, right? And then with the script, what happens in a bound script, the luxury is, A, that you know what you're doing. So you can start making your notes and saying what props are required, what costumes are required. But also that you can plan in a way that, let's say the speed of the director is three pages a day. Then you know it's a 30-day shoot then you know that, you know, that many days and that many nights. So it's technical, right? So if you don't have a bound script, you're con so I remember... Okay, I'm going to take names and it's all right. But so I was doing Mehuna. I was producing Mehuna for uh, uh, SRK because that was his first home production uh, outside of, uh, uh, you know. Uh, so they had, they had Dreams Unlimited and then they started Red Chili. So Red Chili's made the first film was Mehuna. And I got a script from uh, the director and Farah gave me a script. And then, you know, we were, we were budgeting and stuff like that. And then uh, in one line of the script was, and this will be a song the best ever song shot. Okay. So I had no idea what to put down in numbers, how many days she would take to shoot that song, what the locations were going to be, what is the requirement of product. And I'm talking at the pre-production stage. See, like I said, people bring different strengths to the table. My strength was not that. I had no clue what to do. So if you're coming to me saying, hey, this girl can bring a film within budget, within the time frame that is prescribed and can deliver, I can deliver with what I know. I can't deliver with that. Right? So then, so there was, so these are the things that I know how to break down. So if you give me a script and say best song shot ever, or if you give me, now that one line can be six minutes on screen, right? It could be one crore of the budget, not counting what you're paying the music director. Right? So, so I wouldn't know what to do. I have not budgeted for, for the six days. Now I can't hurry up the director and say, listen, boss, we have a 45-day schedule. You still have six days for song. So now just hurry up with the scenes. There's an emotional quotient to the scene. There's an emotional quotient to the song. There's a value that you bring. So I can't work in that. So like I said, they're different. So you need to know what you're getting into, whether, can you, whether you can deliver in that atmosphere. And then you take on the challenge. I mean, it was, it was a blast, as you can imagine. You know, doing that one entire song. That was not the song. But we, the first song was a song shot uh, in one shot. In, uh, that was the first schedule. I mean, it was a mad thing. But I did not do it after that. Because I could not. I, and see, the thing for me, the fun is that a mehuna can be made without me. I left right after production. I mean, pre-production and we shot the first song. It was made. It was a huge hit. But I know for a fact that an Iqbal, a Doer, a Rockford cannot be made without me. Only I can deliver those movies to you. And that gives me such an ego kick. That gives me such a, such a trip that I want to make those movies.
should do what I did not do. They should stick it out. They should learn that because most often whatever is taught within four walls in the luxury of changing when we can or relearning it or getting a second chance, that doesn't happen in life. So, you know, uh, if you have to stick it out. You will learn the process. What you learned is really not the end all and be all of it, right? This is art. You can learn how to, uh, all of you probably went to JJ School of Arts and an MF percent came out of it. All of us went to Annapurna School and maybe, um, you know, I'm just thinking, maybe Mani Ratna will come out of it. We don't know. It is on your inner talent. It is an inner conviction. And what all they might de-learn from school, I don't know. But that what they will learn is a wealth of experience only a real set will give you. It might, you might really want to come up and, you know, say I learned nothing in school. But where it will come to you in help is when you are doing your own stuff, where you see a problem, where you can go back to process and say, listen, if we follow this process, maybe the outcome will be different. So the foundation can only be built on process, can only be built on studies. But the imarat that you built on it, but the building that you built on it can only come with experience. So you need both of that. And trust me, someone coming out of film school is always has more to their personality, has more under their belt because they can fix things easier than someone who's just randomly trying it by trial and error. Here there's a process that they can fall back on. They know what to do. It's like, you know, when everybody says that, why do you need a degree to fly a plane? You need to learn how to fly a plane. It's because the degree has taught you about clouds, about nimbus cloud and this cloud. And you will know at some point in school, you learn leeward and windward. And when there's a problem, you'll know what to do. And that's what education does. Education builds a foundation. No amount of hands-on experience can build. And the same way hands-on experience gives you life lessons, no amount of education can give. And if you have the privilege of getting both, grab it. Don't let go of one for the other. I have worked with ADs all my life who have done nothing but will kill to be on a Nagesh Kukunu set. And that's all I want from them. That's all I want because I keep, we have a very small set of people because I keep saying if on set you're not doing anything, there's going to be a huge fuck up because there, the way we've designed the production, nobody has time to rest and think, Chal, yeah, shall I listen to the song? That means please be sure something down the line is going to be really huge and you'll be the one in some way responsible for it. So basically, you know, you have to, I need that commitment. I need that energy. I need that because if I'm getting six people to work on my set, I want the six people who will shed blood for Nagesh. And that's all I'm looking for. So the mindset is to be a part of the project, to make that film, to see your name on cellulite, come what me. Then there is no things like rest. So like we always say, and we believe in a process where everything is written down. Everything. We maintain logs of everything. Because tomorrow, God forbid, you decide to not come or you cannot come. The film can't stop. I can't say, no, sir, uh, that, uh, you know, the, the I don't have the costume. She's, I don't know what continuity is. Because she didn't come, right? But the mindset is that I want to make a film. I want to be on a set. I want to see the film process through completion. There are times people, you know, but you know, the most valuable lesson I have taught people, the most valuable lesson I've taught ADs or people who work with me is that they don't want to be filmmakers. And I can't tell you what a service I've done to this industry by teaching those people that lesson. Because the clarity, how many people who wanted to work on a set after Hyderabad Blues? Because they thought and said, Are, ye toh ghar mein shoot kara. Uske ke kara hai. You know, so of course we can make a movie. And they come on my set. <laughs> and then they're dying. <laughs> because they're waking up at 5.30 and going back to sleep at 9 o'clock in dreamless sleep, only to be woken up at 5.30 again. Continuously for 45 days. It's not easy. It's not easy to have that energy, that passion, that dedication, that commitment for 45 days. It is such, so I've had people who, you know, literally pull themselves like this and say, Aaj main set pe <laughs> today I will not do this. But when you turn around and see all my ADs who either become filmmakers and all, there are people who've enjoyed, who every time a photograph comes up in memory, we've only laughed and said, remember how sir did not do this and we had to pull him out of that thing. Oh, there are times when you've done stuff like one of our lead actors had the runs on the set. Right? And then we were, of course, shooting on a real location. So we built a stupid ad hoc bathroom. And at that point, someone had occupied the bathroom. And this guy was like, I have to use the toilet now. And 
we were like yeah please go use the toilet why are you telling me production about this and i have my completely amazing woman my right hand devika who's under me and uh, i look at devika and devika say hey, he can go the bathroom is built so then the makeup guy came and said no there's someone in the bathroom we said really so we knocked on the door and the guy from inside said ostana <laughs> you know it was in hyderabad and devika was like ostana open the door now she pulled that guy mid shit i think and threw him out <laughs> and told the actor he could go in so that kind of a mindset that the actor has to be ready for shot he wants to go to the bathroom i will make sure the bathroom is empty it doesn't matter whether you're a woman man you know it's the most sexless job on earth a sexual job on on earth is being on a film set they really don't care whether you're a woman whether you have your periods whether you are a man whether you're wearing shorts it doesn't matter there is a human being who can do that job for me so that is what it is it that is the mindset i will make that film the fact that we do pre production is so that we can replace people right We're replacing people in pre production whatever stage before the camera is switched on is a luxury we have replaced people mid production from uh, going from uh, rajasthan to uh, himachal we have replaced people and either found people or jab- see the, you know i don't know how good or sensible it is to get someone like me to talk about production because we worked in hyderabad blues we did everything ourselves so literally when nagesh and i can say everybody can go we we'll make this film we know what to do to make a film i during mod which is 2011 how many years was i already into being a producer since 98 right on mod 2000 level i had to sack the first ad and the second ad because at one point i sat we was filming something and i said where's amir who was the first ad and that was lunch time and i didn't know whether it was a good thing or a bad thing that i did not realize he was not on set until lunch can you imagine so i was like why am i feeding another body i have that i'm not paying people because if i keep telling them listen i'm teaching you how to make a movie but i'm feeding somebody right i'm giving him a room to stay in that is going out of my budget so i used to make call sheets and slip under actors doors saying that tomorrow this is your call time and this is the uh, you know uh, hierarchy of shoot and stuff like that or the uh, way the shoot is going to be so you never stop being in production it doesn't matter nobody says oh i'm first ad i'm not going to pick up that stool from there that's the prop pastors this thing these labels are only for you to understand what one should do nobody does that all the time to make them was another beast only and you know nobody took me seriously for a long time because i don't know if you you've met me personally i'm i'm very small even when you talk to me on the phone and when i come into the room the look on the person's face is like where's your mother and i'm like no no i am only my mother this is how i look that's how i sound so you know uh, so, and plus i'm a woman plus i look small so nobody took me seriously for uh, a long time so th- with any problem nagesh is the director i'm the producer right nagesh is sitting in front of the monitor whatever problem they would go to him and say sir this happened and nk would really look surprised and say no no i that's production go to man you know but they would not come to me because what can i do bhai ab main itni choti bachche wahan pe khade hain jeans mein wo nahi kya karengi so they never never come to me so we literally from the third film on which is bollywood calling i would interview ad's and i would hire them telling them that your job is to work for a week and then you will mess up and i will publicly scream at you on set and throw you out of set and you will lose your job are you okay with that i will pay you money for that that was to you know put it in people's mind in the crew from the lightman down to everyone that i wear the pants that if i do really throw you out of set it rem- it will you know remains that you remain out of set you don't come back the next day because someone else has decided to bring you on and especially not nagesh because he would you know go with me on everything so these are the little things we had to do to convince people or to you know tell people that no job is small and no person is big enough everything is at pi- it's the most equal pl- other than the director the director genuinely is god because it's not a democratic process it's not about what eight people think for him to say print it is what he thinks because he's putting his name out there you would never see a movie and say first ad idiot tha koi bhi nahi bolta tha sa it obviously comes back to the director if he is taking that much of the you know the blame game and the name game then he needs to be convinced as to what he's doing that genuinely should come to the production department the director should not be allowed to handle actors that has to remain a professional scene where he's at par with the actor the difference people here they do is that 
they make it all about the director actor relationship if they have a relationship that's fine it's absolutely fine they will do anything for the director but to make the director handle an actor is an extremely unfair thing to do because they can be manipulated in many ways they can be you know they'll ask for multiple takes they'll give their own thing then the director comes across as junior and if you're leading a team and we know that there's someone above you you're not going to lead a team the actor should be the responsibility of the production and i've always said if i can make a movie without actors and without accounts i'd be the happiest person on earth but unfortunately that's the core problem of my job or the core competence that comes to me is actors how i handle actors is you know there are many times i want to like the person so if i like the person i can do anything then there are some people who are worth all the crap they bring with them right so you are like oh god this guy is a pain in the ass but he's worth it so you tell yourself ke chal yaar you know what you're going to get in the end is great but if you're not worth it in a pain in the ass you have no room on my set very rarely have i you know see also the thing is if we go for real locations we go outdoor journeys but there not enough places to when we made ekbal we were living in tenali in a lodge called gautham in that gautham lodge i had changed the bed covers the lighting i had put picture frames put dares in people's rooms i had changed the entire interior of the thing because we lived there for 40 days and the actors and was, stayed in the same place everyone stays in the same place on our films everyone stays in the same place where the director stays is where the actors stay including akshay kumar even in canada see that's what you establish a hierarchy right you are like because see okay for example let's let's take akshay kumar i take him to canada and i put him up in a different place who else is there in the film sharmila tagore girish karnal they may not be marquee value but they are senior they are respected you can't put them in a lower hotel than akshay kumar and tell them boss he is a star it is i can't do that so on my set everybody eats the same food there are no separate dabbas coming for anybody so even the lightman knows that ma'am and sir are eating the same food every once in a while i go and eat with the lightman i stand in queue with them they like man 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 i said eat quietly i'm just going to eat with you so it's that whole thing of that we all in it together it is not about i am greater i am getting more money it's not about that but again coming to actors there are some actors who are paying in the aspect they are now what to do they are that's the part of their job requirement and you know we have to put up with it so grin and bear it be empathy have sympathy for yourself for him and keep saying you know like we always say there's this ghalib ka share that says hazaro khwahish hai aisi ke har khwahish pe dam nikle you know he's talking about his lover and we say ke hazaro khwahish hai aisi ke har khwahish pe hamara dam nikle because we have to you know go and get whatever they want so you just it's a part of the game chalo deal with it so we you know and then but one thing about actors huh if they know that you know your shit they are they bring down the trouble not at least by 80% they need to know nasiruddin shah he is known to be such a difficult actor to work with right on day one he'll gauge does nagesh know what he's doing does lion know what she's doing and if you know what you're doing or at least you're trying your best to handle a situation they're not jerks they all want to look good and come off on screen they just feel that they have a sense of entitlement and if you break that down and if you see that everybody is killing themselves by the by the fourth day akhi was not eating in his van uh, akshay kumar was not eating in his van and because we all eat together we have a great time we are laughing at that one hour of completely you know de-stressing and getting back onto the set after that right so you de-stress in that one hour half the time you come people are just fighting to say are yaar wo uske baad aur ek table join kar so we are in this long buffet table starting with the director ending with the actor and the makeup person because it's just de-stressing laughing about what happened at that point and stuff so you treat them like human beings you treat them like you respect them and value them and they will always give it back to you making process easier if you are uh, you know if you have your processes in place and if you have all um, of your uh, uh, what should i say uh, planning correctly right but sometimes it cannot happen it cannot happen there are times when you know things go all right it's a film production you're dealing with 110 people things will take time lighting does take time uh, costumes will have messed up and never you know put a number powder not wash your shirt because it's continuity you and then you don't want to remember exactly where you put the number powder and the underarms will smell these things will happen like i just said take it with a pinch of salt Expl- they just see that you are doing your job well or not well is again subjective right it's it's you know you can't be objective what how well that person is doing a job so basically you have to have a very personable um, impression on them you have to be friendly you have to be nice you have to make it the it should be worth their while coming on set the next day it has to be worth. so like for example one day 
uh, there was an actor who was really difficult and he was in his van all day because there was a problem with setting. But what we had planned was that if he finish off his work today, he won't be called tomorrow, right? So he can get the day off. And he was traveling a lot. Very, very senior actor, very crotchety, but worth his while on screen. So I told the AD to tell, to communicate to him that, tell him that, you know, we are working the scene off, so tomorrow he'll get an off. But he has spread such terror on the set that nobody wanted to approach him only, including his own staff. So that AD went and told that staff, that boss, sir, ko bol ke, aaj unka kaam khatam hai. Nobody approached that actor. He didn't know. All day he waited. Then he got furious and he sent uh, a thing on set saying, I'm leaving. But we were ready for a shot. Or, or you know, I think I, we sent the person to say, you're ready for the shot. And he said, I'm leaving. And I was like, why? So I went on set and, and he was really pissed off. And he was taking off his costume and he was putting on his uh, home clothes to go. And I said, what sir? He said, Pura din wait kar aur kya hai ye mamla? I said, sir, we were hoping to let you go that you won't have to come tomorrow. But now please understand this. He has committed to leaving. He has already taken off his costume. He's not going to, I have to help him save face, right? So I would say, Theke, sir, ab jaye, kal subah jaye. no problem. I was just trying to say that, you know, you're coming from the suburbs. The shooting isn't tight. I understand where you are. Really sorry, but you please go. But because he had committed to leaving, he couldn't put back the costume and say, chal, aata you couldn't do that. So you also play along with the whole thing. So you understand, it's a, it's a bit of human psychology. He knows that you're playing a game. I know that I'm playing a game, but everyone's in the same place. And the next day when he came, you know, I was like, good morning. And he hugged me and said, good morning, sweetheart. I'm sorry for yesterday. I'm like, no, no. So you you don't carry grudges the next day. Your entire shoot day can go for a toss. If you have a sulking actor, sulking director, sulking, no room for sulks. Gussa thuko, aage bado. That's the only way to do it. I want to go on set right now. I don't know why you all make me talk like that. when. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, an actor, someone or the other will end up keeping happy. If they're not happy with the producer, they'll find an AD, they'll find a script continuity person, they'll find a makeup man, because they know they're getting paid huge amounts of money and they are the important ones. Keeping your crew on your side and, you know, making it out to be that they're as important because they are. They are. A gaffer, you know, and I learned this from Meera Nair because um, what happened was I was uh, talking, we were talking about the production manager, Kal Harish, who was going to come, uh, you know, work on our film. And he had just finished a Meera Nair film. And he said, uh, one day, uh, they were shooting in Jodhpur or Jaipur or some such Rajasthan city. And he said that uh, my someone knocked on the door in the morning and I opened. And there was uh, Meera Nair with a tray of breakfast and saying, Chalo, we'll have breakfast together today. And he said, my jaw just dropped saying that. And I'm thinking, what a cool idea. All I need to do is stand in line with my crew, right? And, and th that is what I learned from her. And I thought, and it has been an experience on a, or a lesson I will not forget. And I will not forget to teach. Be kind to your crew. They are the ones that hold. You know, if you are here, this is the crew that's holding you. You cannot be here if this support is not there for you. And please, please give as much respect as you can to this crew. So I'll tell you another thing. I, when my memory was good, I knew everyone's name by heart. I walk into the set and it's only good morning, good morning. Good morning, Anil, good morning. This, good morning, ma'am. So I would walk like a teacher with their entire crew. And it gave me such a heart like good morning to every day like that. And now I don't remember everybody's names. So I call everybody as sir and ma'am. Everybody. From my spot boy to this. It's like, sir, can I please have that? Ma'am, can, can you please do that? They get embarrassed in the beginning. But the entire culture goes around. So everyone on my set requests to each other by sir. So I have had lighting men saying, sir, sir, wo baby gira na sir se. So, you know, and then they laugh about it. But, you know, it's a whole, the culture goes on, right? I mean, what is there to give a little respect, bhai? Kya ja ra aapka kisi ko sir bolo to? Kya izzat aapki kam ho Kisi aur ko izzat deke. It is such a great atmosphere when you have happy people on set saying, are sir, karte hai na? You know, we are like, you know, we have no time left, but I really have to pull off that magic hour shot. Firstly, why the hell it's called magic hour in India? I don't know. It's about three seconds or something. They said, ye karna hai, waase hai na hai. Can you... Can we set up trolley for that magic? Karte na, sir. So, you know, that kind of thing only comes if they respect and they know that they are respected. All these, which we consider as good traits, are not what you're born with. It is what you pick up. So, you may not get it now. You'll get it one year later. You might get five years later. You might get ten years later. But it is something that you all have it in you as filmmakers and you only need to tap into that. <laughs>